So let me give you a pretty typical scenario. Somebody asks you, hey, how much does it cost for X? And then you respond with, okay, well, that costs Y. Does this look familiar to you? Because everything about it is totally wrong. What's up, y'all? This is the Art Mentor. My name is Sean. I'm a veteran art teacher and freelance artist. And I want to talk to you about this really common bad practice done by a lot of people that take commissions and do creative freelance work. So in this video, I want to give you a really effective script that you can use in order to entice more clients, to get yourself more business, and to help develop better rapport with your clients so that they'll want to buy your services. And it's going to start right now. So first, let's examine the issue with this. First off, this is too short. It's too impersonal. You can't properly assess the client or the project. And overall, you're just degrading the entire commission process and the conversation into like a McDonald's drive through style commission conversation instead. One of the major issues that I see here is that this type of interaction is totally devoid of any type of personal connection or experience. And it's not good for you or the client. So instead, what I recommend is that you follow the following steps to get more clients to want to work with you and want to buy more of your services afterwards. So step one is pretty simple. You should always make sure that any type of pricing or evaluation conversation is held in a direct message. So first off, if somebody asks you how much your services cost, the first thing you should tell them is, hey, DM me. There you can go ahead and you can pick up the conversation and restart it in a proper format. My personal preference, for example, is Discord. I find that everybody pretty much has Discord. A lot of corporate clients have Discord as well, but you can easily use any other direct messaging service. I prefer direct message conversation. I would encourage you to use it too because it's much better than email because it's instantaneous conversation. I personally find that email is a very antiquated method of communication. You don't, it's less sticky, it's less messy. You don't have to worry about any of your direct messages getting deleted or missed. Now let me show you how you should go ahead and proceed forward in the conversation once you have this done. Now your first step here in your conversation is to excite them. So very basic question to ask is, hey, can you please tell me a little bit more about your project? I would love to hear it. And what you wanna do is start this conversation with them and let them explain to you. And people love to talk about themselves. And this is a really great way for you to forge a bond through organic conversation. Rather than just being a stale, cold, business heavy type of conversation. I'm going to teach you right now how you should go about this and what this entire video goes over is how to create this through more of a low pressure sales conversation rather than a high pressure sales pitch. Now what you're going to gain from this is you're going to gain the whole overview of a project. You should never just go ahead and just slam out pricing when somebody asks you because you don't know enough yet. And what I'm going to tell you from my personal experience with this and from talking with other artists that utilize this type of method is that clients actually want this. They like this because it shows that you appear that you're interested and you care about them. So clients really enjoy this. Now this whole process seems longer, but it's really essential so that you know this. You should always ask for as much detail as possible because this will inform your quote. Now, as you're doing this, you don't have to make it seem like it's obvious and that's the only thing that you're going for but you should respond excitedly, ask them questions about it, get to know what exactly they want. If they want you to design a book cover, if they want you to illustrate a book, if they want you to do a character design, or they want you to do a creature design or a model for them, regardless of what that project is, respond excitedly and say things like, that's so cool, oh, I love that, that's a great idea, that sounds like so much fun, man, I would love to work on that. And again, this builds strong rapport between you and the client, that's the best part of this. So let me just go ahead and give you an example of why you need to do this. So here, I'm gonna show you two of my older character designs. Uh, they were commissioned by the same client and I charged the same price for them and that's the only reason why. But if these two clients came to me separately, I would give them two totally different quotes. So I have one character design, which is of a girl in pretty standard clothes. And then I have another character design of another woman who is in a lot of big high-tech armor. Well, if you really probed into the details of both clients, hypothetically, then you should definitely charge the more complex one here a lot more money because it's going to take you more time and you have more details and you have more things that you have to do. So that's the basis of it and why I see a lot of artists really struggle with the commissions process and in getting any attractions and in getting more clients because they are undercharging themselves with the amount of work and then they get burnt out and they get stressed out and then they dump out. So hey, let's take a brief moment to interrupt this video for a word from our sponsor. 
it's me. Please go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that you know whenever I push out more content like this. And hey, don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well, at The Art Mentor. Now let's get back to it. Now still, make sure you don't rush into that quote yet, and instead, you still need to ask more. I know that this may appear like a long-winded version of this, and you may feel anxious that, hey, maybe I'm gonna lose this client, but you're actually doing the opposite, I assure you, because the more information that you try and expunge from this conversation and about this project and about the client, the more that they're gonna feel comfortable with you. And this is the number one thing that we have to do as freelancers, is we have to inspire confidence in our clients. Ask for things like, do you have any references? If they don't have any type of previous renders done, um, then you should definitely ask for some pictures of, hey, what are you thinking about if you're working from just a text description of that thing or that place or that book? And also if they have any pre-renders of it, if they have any type of sketches, regardless of how horrible they are, they might have done it themselves. Most clients, private clients especially, they are not art people. So they have some pretty crude looking sketches, but that's good for you to know and to be informed with. They might have a character model, they might have a base, they might have a mock-up, whatever that is, you should definitely ask for that in this initial conversation. Because again, you are evaluating them to see first off how they are going to be as a client and also kind of how strict they're gonna be. Then when you're ready, you can go ahead and start your pitch like this. So now at this stage, you are definitely ready to go ahead and start your price pitch, but hold on now. Don't rush into this because you're gonna freak them out. So instead of just coming in hot and saying, okay, cool, well, my price for character is this amount. Instead, we wanna ease them into it and I would very much recommend that you gauge their commitment level to this project first. What I personally like to do is I like to say this sentence. So how serious are you about this project? Would you like to start soon? You can also ask something like, hey, I've loved our conversation together. Would you like to discuss moving forward on this? Another thing that happens around this point is that you're gonna be able to gauge and understand very well, hey, I'm just thinking about this, or yes, I'm ready to pull the trigger and you are my man. Now, I know that you might be thinking at this time, hey, well, this might be uh, convincing the client to not go with me, but in actuality, what you're doing is you're disarming them completely, and now it puts the ball in their court and you are in the power position from it. So that's a big difference in this low pressure type of sales pitch. Now, when they agree, it's time for the sales pitch. So here, what you wanna do is you wanna summarize everything that they have told you so far and wrap all that into a nice informed quote. So basically you wanna utilize this type of format. You wanna say something like, well, hey, based on your description, I'm gonna give you a full size character and it's gonna include a very detailed illustrated background and therefore your price is this. And along with that too, what you wanna include are what type of assets they're gonna get. So you could structure it something like, hey, at the end of this, you're gonna get a 4K JPEG file or you're gonna get, um, you're gonna get PDFs of each page of your book in this type of format. So this is the basic premise of it. Me personally, I also include a process video of all of my paintings. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I do it for YouTube, it's fun. Now, all of this supports your quality, what they get, and really importantly, always end that rather than just a statement or a fact, end it with, hey, how does that sound to you? How does that work with your budget? This again, disarms them, makes them feel more comfortable about the process, and it makes them feel less pressured. And now around this time, you might have to deal with this. Overcoming objections is something that all freelance artists need to learn how to deal with properly. And it's at this point that clients might be apprehensive, they might be unsure of what they're gonna get, or just to be honest, they might just be too cheap. So let me just review a few of the most common objections that I have seen and I've seen other people complain about and how you could and should respond to them. Now, objection number one is pretty simple, is the client is gonna say that it's too expensive for them, it's outside of their budget. So what can you do? What can you say about that? Pretty simple. So you could say something like, okay, well, what is your budget? Let's see what we can do together. Let's see if we can work together. Myself, personally, I've pitched full character pricing, and then they say, oh, I don't know, that's a little much. And I say, okay, well, let's, let's talk. Let's see what we can do together. And then maybe we'll settle on a bus or we'll settle on a portrait of that. And then there's equally satisfied for the price tag. So that's a really great way for you to go ahead and work with them. Again, maybe they want a book that's 20 pages and then you give them your quote 
and oh yeah, they can only afford 10 pages or 15 pages and they need to condense it down, but they're really passionate about working with you. See what you can do to get them. You don't wanna just let them off the hook and say, well, too bad, see you later, son. Another really common objection that you'll experience at some point is that somebody's just gonna absolutely go nuts over your pricing and then say something like, whoa, that's way too much. Or like, hey, wait a minute, I've seen this for way less than that. Okay, well, if that's somebody's interpretation of what they interpret as fair wages for artists, you can just remind them about what they're gonna get from your services. And honestly, what you should never do at this point is beg them. Don't degrade down your prices at this point just because one person in the world feels like you are charging too much. The issue with this is that it creates a really low standard for you in your art making and then you degrade yourself and start to tell yourself that you're only worth X amount of dollars because one person happens to think that way. Not the case, by the way. So definitely don't lower your pricing just for one person. It's not the right thing to do long term. And the final most common objection is that your client might say to you, hmm, I'm not really sure or I need to think about that. I'm not really ready to commit just yet. Now look, this is not a moment for you to be a high pressure salesman, okay? You should definitely not lean in with something like, okay, well, listen, I only got one slot left, buddy, and you got a book now, or hey, I'm not really certain. Don't lean in with any of that. Instead, just say, okay, I understand. It Would it be okay though if I followed up with you in a week? Would it be okay if I followed up with you in a few days? Is that all right? Every single time I've ever asked that and followed up with them, They've had no problem. In fact, they appreciate it. It shows that you're interested, but it also shows that you are not desperate because that also might be a power play on the part of your client because I see them doing it publicly online like they should not, as we already discussed, and I see them lower the price tag in order to try and entice the client. Don't do this again. Now, once this is all ironed out, go ahead and do this. You are ready now to seal the deal, and that starts and ends with you collecting payment. Now, I always recommend that you collect payment upfront. You have to collect payment upfront as a freelance artist or else it's not real. Nothing ever happened and you do not pick up that pencil, that paintbrush, that stylus at all until you get payment. Now, what your payment structure is, that's gonna be up to you. If you're gonna do split payments, you need payment before you do anything at all. If you ever have anybody that's apprehensive about doing that, what I typically tell them is, however though, I wanna remind you, I am a professional and I can give you references. Has anybody ever asked me for references in the last eight years? Heck no, they have not. And they probably won't ask you either unless they're a corporate client. So this is a really bulletproof strategy for you to make sure that you get the payment that you deserve. Now, another common thing that will start to happen around here is that they might say, well, hey, look, I don't have all the money right now. Can we wait a little bit? So here's what I wanna tell you with that. If a client says that they need to wait to get you money, eh, that's a dicey situation because they may decide to spend that money on something else. What I've done before, and I actually just recently did this, where a client said, I don't have the money right now, or I won't have it until next week. And I said, okay, well, look, can you give me a good faith down payment? Can you give me like 25% right now? And I will secure your spot on my commission schedule right now if you do this. And they say yes, and I've done this multiple times. And it's a really great strategy to make sure that you get some form of commitment and to ease your anxiety about whether or not you're gonna get that money and you have some type of promise. And if you do do that, I do wanna let you know that you should consider that a non-refundable deposit because somebody is promising time out of your schedule. All of this creates the most low pressure sales pitch to which you feel good doing, you don't feel awkward, and the client feels really great and excited to work with you. And when you're all set with that, of course you wanna thank them for their time, tell them that you're excited to work with them, and tell them to keep in contact with you through whatever medium you choose. So if you wanna learn more about how to increase your art business skills and work better with clients and where to get more commissions, go ahead and watch these videos right here.